If you're looking to learn more about vaping and resources on quitting, this video is for you. I'm Dr. Christopher Leonard with the Counseling and Testing Center at WSU, and today I will be talking about vaping. Let's begin. Vaping devices, as you see, can come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and with over 450 brands, some may look like traditional cigarettes and some may not. When vaping, the nicotine is taken in by e-liquid, or what is often called juice. The juice is then vaporized and inhaled. Juice can come in multiple flavors and with varying levels of nicotine. Some vaping devices are operated by battery or rechargeable by USB. However, some de vaping devices have been found to explode. Interesting fact, an e-cigarette patent can be found going all the way back to the 60s. So, vaping devices and juice are not currently fully regulated by the FDA, but it's in the works. Ingredients, safety and emissions, manufacturing process will now be reviewed. However, there are compliance windows for companies, and this can be up to two years. This is a big issue currently because consumers have no federal check on what is being added into the juice as well as how is the product being made. Thus, consumers don't know if there are harmful ingredients in the juice. Also, research has found companies have inconsistent levels of nicotine in their juice compared to what is being advertised with the product. Thus, standardization is limited. Therefore, it is likely individuals will have to use more juice for the same results of a traditional cigarette. Trends to consider are youth use has been doubling every year since 2009. Former smokers are making up one-third of users. So some theories behind this are vaping is not viewed as harmful, vaping is not considered smoking, and vaping then carries less stigma. However, we then also see a strong amount of individuals who are dual users, which can be concerning when one tries to use a vaping device to quit smoking. This is concerning because we do not want an individual who is trying to quit smoking to take up vaping as well. Finally, there has been an increase in poison center calls. Possible reasons for this is the increased access to vaping device as well as the varying levels of nicotine in the juice. So is it safe? That's a great question. Professionally, I would say not likely. A recent study from the UK, however, would indicate that vaping is 95% safer than traditional cigarettes. However, it does not mean that they are safe overall, that they are the best cessation strategy, and that we know the long-term health impact from vaping. Research has also found that certain brands contain carcinogens. It is also important to know that we don't know the impact from the juice ingredients when they change from a liquid to a vapor. Currently, there are some concerns related to popcorn lung. I would encourage you to search popcorn lung if you want to learn more. Also, other than the ingredients, current health impacts include airway resistance, heart rate increases, changes in blood pressure, and nicotine poisoning, and finally, Passive vaping can occur as well. So, does it help people quit smoking traditional cigarettes? Vaping can be seen as an alternative to smoking and it may delay relapse, but concerns about becoming a dual user is great. Also, there is no current FDA approved vaping devices for cessation. There is no standardization and no real research with standardized juice. Vaping has not been found to be any better than the nicotine patch, which is FDA approved. And finally, and most importantly, the long-term impact on public health has not been determined due to no long-term studies. Currently, these options are the FDA-approved and evidence-based ways to quit smoking. Individuals can quit using one strategy or in combination. I recommend individuals meet with a trained professional regarding treatment options so each person can have an individualized treatment plan tailored to their needs. Research has shown the highest age group wanting to quit smoking is 18 to 24. So here are our campus resources. A variety of resources and support are provided by each resource and I encourage anyone on campus who is thinking about quitting to consult with one or all the resources on what best suits you. For example, the Counseling and Testing Center and the Kansas Quit Line can provide behavioral support and education. Student Health Services can provide medication and behavioral support and Tobacco-Free Woo and Me can provide education. Since now you know the treatment options available on campus, we should now look at what are the treatment outcomes. 
Well, research has found that pharmacotherapy has rates of quitting that are doubled. And thus, it is important that we make this available and individuals know that this is one of their options. Still, the best outcomes are a combination of behavioral treatments and NRT, as well as non-micotine medication treatments. Recommendations are vaping could be considered safer than traditional cigarettes. However, they should not be considered safe. It is not recommended that individuals use vaping to quit smoking due to the availability of safer and FDA approved slash evidence based ways to quit. Also there are concerns with regulation and the lack of knowledge on long term health impact. Thank you for watching this video on vaping and treatment resources. If you're here at WSU and you like help with quitting tobacco or just want to learn more, feel free to contact us at the Counseling and Testing Center or stop by Grace Bokey Hall, room 320. You can also give us a call at 316-978-3440 or visit our website. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter for updates, mental health tips, and other information. If you have comments or questions about this presentation, don't hesitate to contact us. And again, thank you so much for your time and attention.